Let's go. As results went our way this weekend, Sonnen were presented with a must-win game away to West Brom at the Hawthorns. Coming into this, West Brom were unbeaten at home since October last year and had not lost at home for 14 games in a row, winning 11 of those and conceding only five goals in all that time. A staggeringly impressive run of form. West Brom were also a significant attacking threat, lying fifth in the division for crosses, third for accurate passes and second for big chances created. West Brom followed other recent teams in relinquishing the wings to us in favour of making a compact defence with a high line, combined with sitting off our defensive third. The idea was to make it very difficult for us to play through them in the middle of the park. Here's another example. Instead, they offered us the wing, hoping to close us off and steal the ball in transition, whilst comfortable in the knowledge that we were significantly disadvantaged should we try to cross it. If they could do this, then West Brom had pace through the channels in attack, with Asante up front, who looked to have the beating of Sirkin and 09. And in John Swift, they have a player who has created the second most amount of chances in the league. Sunderland, for their part, were racked with injuries and forced into playing no recognised centre-halves today. Down to the bones, Mowbray Fieldist, the youngest starting eleven in the entire championship this season, with nine of the starting eleven under the age of 22. It wasn't all doom and gloom, though. Coming into this game, we were one of the form teams in the division, on a run of six games unbeaten, which is the best we've been all season. This is also a highly creative side, with nine out of the ten starting outfield players and three of those on the bench having all scored for us this season. There are goals everywhere in this side, and we had scored in 27 of the last 28 games. So we are a threat. Mowbray has had to work hard to give us some way to win games. Today, he selected Abdullah Barr up front alongside Gelhardt, as he had successfully done so against Norwich. Barr helps to stretch the line well when he plays and takes some of the pressure off Joffe. Clark. Something with no height in their attack. West Brom started in a rush of attack. After this, the game settled down and it was Sunderland who dominated possession with nearly 75% of the ball for the rest of the half. When West Brom did have the ball, they increasingly looked to the channels and to physically dominating us. There's a yellow card being shown for that earlier challenge on Gelhart. And that was it. It is perhaps to combat this physical threat that Mowbray started Equa today alongside Neil in only his third professional league start. And after a few errors, Pierre settled well and looked very good. Right idea. He muscled West Brom off some balls on a booking and presented for the ball in space repeatedly. Equa, a little bit of space to work in here. He's got bar making. He was excellent today, and remember, this is only his third ever professional league start. An attack of any kind, maybe now, bar. Then, completely against the run of play, West Brom were awarded a penalty. The advice of the linesman. It's a challenge from 09. And referee Busby is given the penalty. Is it a pen? Well, at first sight, there appears to be no contact between 09's leading leg and Swift. But it's his rear leg that clearly knocks Swift to the ground when the ball is long gone. Have a look again. It's harsh, but probably correct. But would the nearly dead Swift get up to take the penalty? There from 09. Well, fortunately, 20 seconds later, it was as if his writhing in pain was all an act and he lashed home the penalty to put West Brom a goal up. With the chance, seconds from the end of the first half to give West Brom a lead. Patterson without a save to make so far. Swift, big moment, right down the middle. Goal number seven of the season for John Swift. It feels very much the most important one here. Undeservedly, I think. But oddly, at halftime, I wasn't worried. We always score, the bench looked awesome, and we've come from behind to win the game on five other occasions this season.
So you write Sunderland off at your peril. Mowbray is sometimes labelled a tactical dinosaur, but he's very far from this. In fact, he is highly creative in style and selections. In recent games, he has shown this progressive thinking by taking a leaf out of Vincent Company's book and instructing Lyndon Goose to take a very high, fluid position from right back when we are in secure possession. This helps create a numerical advantage in midfield when up against teams who won't press us too high, leaving a back three to play out the ball and start attacks. Here we can see Gooch in the standard right back position as West Brom are a bit more advanced pressing the ball. But in the second clip, when the ball is much more secure and West Brom are standing off us, Gooch takes up a very advanced position. The ball is passed around patiently looking for an opening. And when one is slapped through the lines to Gooch, you can see it's resulted in a five on four situation with Gooch being the extra man. Clark is out of shot on the bottom here. This is what Mowbray's structure is trying to engineer. At the start of the second half, this paid dividends. When Lyndon Gooch got forward and put up a lovely ball for Dennis Serkin to slip in for a free header and level the score. Bar. Bit of space here for Gooch. Not much support for Lyndon Gooch. Digs out a good cross. Brilliant header. Dennis Serkin with an outstanding header. Sutherland fans going wild behind that goal. And the cross got the header it deserved. It was outstanding ball in. Look tight here for Gooch. Look how he digs this out with the right foot. And Sirkin timed the header perfectly. West Brom won, Sunderland won. Sunderland keep up their remarkable record of having now scored in 27 of the last 28 matches in all competitions. Game on at the Hawthorns. As the game went on, we saw more and more of Sirkin coming forward in the same fashion as Gooch to try and overwhelm the midfield in our favour. We started playing with a back two, with Pato required to act as a centre-half in starting play, or Dan Neal dropping in to help build attacks. Hume. Neal. West Brom weren't done, though, and a break down the left resulted in a period of sustained pressure. Bit of space here for Albion. This is nicely worked. Could lead to a second goal. Deflection. Still a chance. Swift. Townsend hit his own man, Thomas Asante. Townsend again, desperate defending from Sunderland. But just look at the determination from the players here, throwing themselves in the way of shots. Even Ahmad is here, determined not to lose this game at all costs. Townsend. Twice. Mowbray brought on fresh legs just off the armour to keep up the pace in transition for us. And it worked. will come on in the centre midfield to replace Equa. Patrick Roberts, who was signed 15 months ago from Manchester City. Man City paid £12 million for Roberts when he was just 18 years old after coming through the ranks at Fulham. It is no coincidence that Mishu and Pritchard are instrumental to the winning move from back to front. But you can also see how the adventurous system Mowbray encouraged by adding Sirkin to Gooch in the midfield in the second half helps to overwhelm West Brom in this move. But I won't spoil the beauty of another peak Barcelona moment. Just take in the patience, count the passes of this young, skillful side in getting the winner. Mishu. Clark, bit of freedom here for Pritchard, Clark in support, Jallo free on the edge of the penalty area momentarily, Clark, now Gooch, Jallo, Circuit, Clark, Nerves are jangling here. Both sets of supporters. 09. Amagiallo.
Sirkin, Mishu, Pritchard, nicely worked, Sirkin, 2-1, huge goal for Sunderland, and it's Dennis Sirkin again, and it was beautifully worked by this young, talented team, nine of the starting 11 today, 22 or under, a huge injury list. And they've come from 1-0 down to lead late on here at the Hawthorns. At the restart, Carlos Corbran desperately brought on all the subs he had left to turn West Brom into a basketball team and bomb the ball into the Sunderland box in a desperate fight against the clock to find an equaliser. But the lads held on and took a crucial three points to move us into the playoffs. It is utterly staggering that after being promoted in fifth place from League One less than a year ago and suffering an injury list as long as the Nile, that we would even have the possibility of this. But I'm loving the ride. See you next time.